This is Ms. Nelson. Today, we are going to be learning about light waves. Our learning goals are, I can define electromagnetic spectrum, I can describe the electromagnetic spectrum, and I can explain what it means if something displays redshift or blue shift. Light, like sound, is a magical and wonderful thing. It allows us to see, and it makes us feel safe, and it can warm us. Light is an example of a transverse wave. Light waves move up and down or side to side, like a snake slithering through the grass. My warning to you is, we will occasionally simplify the topic of light to make it more approachable and less intimidating. That doesn't mean everything we say is simplified or wrong. It means occasionally we'll simplify some of the concepts. When we talk about light, we are really talking about visible light. So, what is the difference between light and visible light? Light is a broad term which covers the electromagnetic spectrum. The electromagnetic spectrum is a range of wavelengths or frequencies over which the electromagnetic radiation extends. Please note when I say light and when I say radiation, in this context I'm talking about the same thing. Electromagnetic radiation is a kind of radiation which includes radio waves, visible light waves, and gamma rays, to name just a few of the types of waves. Electromagnetic radiation has electric and magnetic waves simultaneously. You can't separate them, they're not separate types of waves. They're connected, but in this case, we're really gonna be focusing on the light part or the electric part, and we're not focusing so much on the magnetic part. Electromagnetic radiation is unique. It does not require a medium to travel through. Remember, a medium is what waves travel through. Most of the light that reaches Earth comes from our sun. A small percentage comes from stars and other astrological bodies. Our sun emits all types of electromagnetic radiation. Those waves travel through space. A small percent of those waves bathe Earth in their glow. That light provides our planet with energy. It heats our environment and it allows us to see. The electromagnetic spectrum groups together all types of electromagnetic radiation. Each type of radiation has specific properties and wavelengths, which we will discuss further. This diagram shows the types of radiation, their relative position, and their wavelengths. If you look online, you will find many similar diagrams. Sometimes the diagrams are swapped. In this diagram, gamma rays are on the left and radio waves are on the right. Sometimes, the gamma rays are on the right and the radio waves are on the left. It's not wrong, it just happens to be how someone chose to draw it. One way to remember the different types of waves is a mnemonic. Rabbits mate in very unusual expensive gardens. Radio waves, microwaves, infrared waves, visible light waves, ultraviolet waves, x-rays, and gamma rays. Let's review some wave vocabulary. The crest is the top of a wave. The trough is the bottom or the lowest point of a wave. The amplitude is the distance between the rest point and our crest. The wavelength is the distance between two consecutive points on a wave. Some people choose to measure the wavelength between crest and crest. Some people choose to measure it from trough to trough. And some people, including me, choose to measure it from the rest point to rest point. Remember, all waves have one crest and one trough. If you measure it from the crest to the crest, you really have two halves of the crest, which you can combine to create one crest. Gamma rays have a wavelength between 0.1 nanometer and 10 to the negative fifth nanometer. They have a frequency between three times 10 to the 18th hertz and three times 10 to the 22 hertz. Nanometers are extremely small and hertz is the SI unit we use to measure frequency. Gamma rays are extremely dangerous they are very hard to block. Gamma rays can go through many different materials, including skin. Gamma rays are used to examine thick material for structural flaws. It is also used to kill some kinds of cancer cells, and it can also be used to irradiate food. Having irradiated food sounds scary, dangerous, and directly out of science fiction. The reality is, it is one of the safest and most cost-effective ways to ensure your food is free from dangerous microorganisms, such as botulism. The radiation burst doesn't damage the food and it doesn't hurt anyone, so it's a win-win. X-rays have a wavelength between 60 nanometers and 10 to the negative fourth nanometers. 
They have a frequency between 5 times 10 to the 15th hertz and 3 times 10 to the 21st hertz. X-rays were discovered in 1895 by German physicist W.C. Röntgen, which I may have pronounced incorrectly. He discovered that X-rays would pass through soft tissue but were stopped by bone and metal. By 1896, X-rays were used by doctors treating broken bones and gunshot wounds. X-rays are used to examine bones, teeth, and vital organs. They can also be used to treat some kinds of cancer. At first, people thought X-rays were only beneficial. Over time, they discovered X-rays can cause cancer. It took a long time before people realized lead shielding was the ideal protection at the dentist's office. Ultraviolet light has wavelengths between 700 nanometers and 16 nanometers. It has frequencies between 7.5 times 10 to the 14th hertz and 5 times 10 to the 15th hertz. Johann Ryder discovered UV light in 1801. He was trying to discover if light extended beyond the visible spectrum. He was able to prove its existence by causing an intense chemical reaction within invisible light. Ultra means above or beyond, so ultraviolet light is above or beyond violet light. We commonly abbreviated ultraviolet to UV. UV light is used to sterilize medical instruments. It is used to sterilize safety goggles in the chemistry room. UV light causes certain minerals to glow, so it can be used to identify different rocks and minerals. When you go outside, you should really wear sunscreen. Sunscreen should help protect you from UV light. UV light can cause your DNA to degrade or to mutate, which can eventually cause cancer. Visible light has a wavelength between 700 nanometers and 400 nanometers. Visible light has a frequency between 4.3 times 10 to the 14th hertz and 7.5 times 10 to the 14th hertz. We see visible light as white light. White light is a mixture of all colors of light. Newton discovered if he passed a beam of sunlight through a prism, it split it into six different colors. The same thing happens within a rainbow. Water droplets suspended in the air split sunlight into six colors and a beautiful rainbow appears. Roy G. Biv. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, which we have since discovered to not really be a light color, and violet. Red light has the longest wavelength, around 700 nanometers. Violet is on the other end of the visible light spectrum and has a wavelength around 400 nanometers. Ultraviolet light is beside the visible violet light, thus the ultraviolet name. Visible light is useful in seeing, in light photography, in optical microscopy, and astronomy. Infrared light has a wavelength between 1 millimeter and 700 nanometers. It has a frequency between 3 times 10 to the 11th hertz and 4.3 times 10 to the 14th hertz. Infrared light was discovered in 1800 by William Herschel. He had split white light into its components. Remember Roy G. Biv? William discovered that if he placed a thermometer just beyond the red light, the liquid in the thermometer rose. This told him some kind of energy was there and it was causing the thermometer to heat up. Infra means below, so infrared light is below red light. Infrared cameras can be used at night to see people. Infrared light is used in physical therapy. Heat lamps often emit infrared light. Microwaves have a wavelength between 30 centimeters and one millimeter. Microwaves have a frequency between one times 10 to the ninth hertz and three times 10 to the 11th hertz. Microwaves are the waves inside microwave ovens that cook your food. You may have noticed that most microwaves have a metal grill or grate on the inside of the door. This blocks most of the microwaves from escaping and possibly hitting you. Microwaves cook food by exciting or energizing the water molecules. The faster the water molecules move, the hotter the food gets. If microwaves hit you, they can cook you as well as they can cook a microwave dinner. Microwaves are used in radar, aircraft navigation, and atomic and molecular research, as well as cooking or heating up food. Radio waves have a wavelength between 30 centimeters and longer. They have a frequency one times 10 to the ninth hertz and shorter. Radio waves are super long compared to the other waves. They are also fairly low energy. Radio waves are utilized for AM and FM radio as well as television. Radio waves can easily go through you without hurting you and they can easily travel over mountains. Rabbits mate in very unusual expensive gardens. Radio waves, microwaves, infrared waves, visible light waves, ultraviolet waves, x-rays, and gamma rays. Radio waves have the least energy and the longest wavelength. Gamma rays have the most energy and the shortest wavelength. 
We have observed the colors of things for millennia. We see that the sky is blue and grass is green. Because visible light is so easy to observe, we have and continue to study it and characterize it. One thing astronomers have discovered is that most objects in space have shifted their color or wavelength over time. As time has progressed, we have observed that most galaxies and solar systems, and even stars, have shifted their color towards the red end of the spectrum. That doesn't mean the color has turned red. It means that the color has shifted towards red. Remember, of the visible light colors, red light has the longest wavelength. Red light has a wavelength around 700 nanometers. It has longer wavelengths than purple light, which have wavelengths around 400 nanometers. When we say something has shifted towards the red end of the spectrum, the wavelengths of the light have lengthened. So there is more distance between the peaks. If the distance lengthens enough, the light can become infrared light or even something else with longer wavelengths. When we say the coloring or the wavelength has shifted towards the red end of the spectrum, that does not mean the color has turned red. Just like sound waves, light waves expand as they travel away from the source of the light or sound. With light, we call this redshift because it shifts towards the red end of the spectrum. When the source of the sound moves towards you, the sound waves compress and the sound gets higher pitched and louder. The same thing happens with light. As the source of the light moves towards you, the wavelengths shorten. This means that the coloring shift towards the blue or violet end of the spectrum. With light, we call this blue shift. Red shift and blue shift are part of the Doppler effect. They visually show us the effect of lengthening or shortening the wavelengths. In this case, it changes the coloring. Let's try and put red shift and blue shift in per into perspective. Please note, this example isn't actually red shift and blue shift, but it is similar to what astronomers observe in space. You are standing by the side of the road at night. A car is far away with its lights on. As the car gets closer, the light gets brighter and bluer. This is very evident with the newer type of headlights. The car speeds past you and keeps going. You now see the red lights from the back of the car. As the car keeps going, the light gets fainter and fainter. This car example is not red shift and blue shift. It's really too close to display the shift and the headlights and taillights are separate lights which emit different colors by design. I will accept this as an example of redshift and blue shift, but please understand that does not mean it is actually an example of redshift and blue shift. Let's review. Light is a transverse wave. Light is part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Light consists of gamma rays, x-rays, UV light, visible light, infrared light, microwaves, and radio waves. The electromagnetic spectrum does not require a medium to travel. Each type of light, each type of radiation, has a specific range of wavelengths and frequencies associated with it. Each type of light has specific properties and uses. Redshift and blue shift are part of the Doppler effect. As the source of the light moves towards you, the wavelengths compress and the coloring shifts toward the blue end of the spectrum. As the source of the light moves away from you, the wavelengths lengthen and the coloring shifts towards the red end of the spectrum. Redshift and blue shift are not limited to the visible light range. You can extend above and below the visible light range. If the source of radio waves is moving towards you, the wavelengths would start to compress. Theoretically, we could receive microwaves or infrared waves instead of radio waves. Thank you for listening, and I hope you have a great day.